Hi everybody, welcome back to Rachel Bella Crafts. Rachel here, hope you're all well. So if you have been following along with my last few videos, you will know that we have been working on a little project this month called May's Minis. Um, they have all included freebies that are available to you in our Kofi shop. Um, if you go over to our Kofi page, the link is in the description box. It will take you straight to the freebies. Um, there is also another link there that if you use that and take that link straight to our Kofi page, you will also have access to 30% off all of our kits this month. Um, the 30% is also off on all of our Etsy shop kits as well. So I'm just going to give you a really quick um, recap of the um, little mini maze that we've done so far um, for those of you who may have missed them previously. So like I said, we've had um, little kits that I've done and I've just done some little tutorial videos then showing you um, how you can then use the, um, you know, the bits and pieces in different ways. All of the embellishments that you see. Oh, the words are also available for free as um, freebies on our uh, Kofi page. They were the first set of freebies um, that were out this month. And then all of these little covers and these little um, pocket sets. All of these are also available as the freebies. And like I say, if you go back and watch the last two videos, you will see all of the different ways that I've shown you that you can utilize um, these cute little projects. Now, the extra bits and pieces that you can see, so the embellishments and what have you, um, they are part of um, the mixed media uh, medley kits that were out in the last month. So we had the patchwork one, um, that's where all of these have come from. Um, and we also had the uh, embroidery one, um, which is where this lovely image has come from. But you can get this image as part of the freebies, as I said, um, and they are all available on our Kofi page. This one in particular, I love these cute little um, cards that get pulled out here. So what are we doing today? Well, today there is a new set of freebies available for you on our Kofi page. Um, and I've also done some extra covers for you. So if you are making these lovely little May Mini projects, you will have some different options to um, play with. Um, you can also see that I've done some of these with stitching and some of them without. That was a little belly band that we made there. We modified a project, a project, a pocket even. Um, and then I just made a little booklet out of this, this little tuck spot there. So there we go. Lots of lovely little ideas there and I think these make oh hang on there is a journal card in it which I now need to pull out um I think these make really um oh I think we'll use that today great little um mass make projects so if you do have loads of mass makes that you need to do for whatever reason or you want to do some happy mail I think these are just great little um elements that you can use for that as I know the ladies who are attending our retreat in, oh my goodness, I think it'll be down to three weeks time now, is it? Um, you will be doing your mass makes because everybody brings something to give out to everybody else. So what are we working with this week? Well, I've got two more sets of freebies for you and then I'll show you the covers. I've cut them all out ready, so I'm trying to save time. And I just want to talk to you about paper and printing very quickly. So these are the two sets of freebies. You will have one set that will do these pocket shapes I, these are included on the sheet so you can see and I think that's meant to go like that actually and then you'll have two of these and two that go there so these are the two large ones one should sit on top of the other and they sit like that in your thing obviously these are the flaps that fold down and then you will have uh, the set here that you can if you want to lay over each other like so so I've got those printed and cut ready and then this section here this set here rather uh, you will have this lovely scalloped pocket here and then on the other side, you will have then these two that go one on top of the other V. OK, so let's talk quickly about paper a moment. Um, so as you can see, I have printed this set here. Oops, they're jumping all over the place. That's got nothing to do with that. I don't know why that's in there. And then I printed this set here. Now, I'm sure it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the difference in the vibrancy of these printouts 
This I have printed on standard print. So that was just normal print option on my printer um, on uh, 120 GSM, I think Navigate. And then I was watching um, Steph from Hilltop View Journals and she has put out some lovely uh, reels and a couple of videos the last couple of weeks where she's been working with the mixed media kits. And I said to her, how are your printouts so vibrant? How is everything that you print in so bright? You know, I'm the designer here and my stuff hasn't come at this bright. And she said, oh, it's the paper. So I said, right, come on, fast up what you're using. So I never want to sit on a secret. This is what we've used. So she recommended this to me. It is available on Amazon. I'm not putting a link up, guys. You can go and find it yourselves. I don't have, well, I do have an Amazon shop and I've just never got around to setting it up. But uh, just so that you know. So this is double-sided matte photo paper. Um, and the particular one that I've got here is, is the Koala and it's A4 and it's 100 sheets in there. I can't quite remember the price, which is pointless to be telling you any, because by the time you go and look, it could be a completely different price. But anyway, that's what I used and I've printed on best setting and that is the difference. I hope you can see with the light, but I mean, my gosh, I just thought that that was really, really striking. I was really impressed with it. So I'm going to be working with that set of papers today um now the last thing that i want to show you very quickly is the covers that are also in the freebies um so there's two extra sets of covers i'm ap apologize for any confusion with last week's freebies so i put the freebies up and then i went out and it hadn't uploaded properly and i didn't realize until i got back and i looked at my messages the next morning and then realized that uh, it hadn't uploaded properly so i then uploaded them properly i added in the covers from the week before for anyone that had missed them and then there was some confusion. I had some messages saying, you've put the same ones on. I know they were the same ones. I intended for them to be the same covers, but they were two sets of pockets. So if you'd watched the video, you'd have seen that explained in there. So these are from the week before. Now I've printed out these ones again. I did these. These are the ones from, from before. Um, look how vibrant they are. Don't they look amazing? That's on that paper. Um, and I've backed them then with some of the mixed media um, I think they were that's at the doodle pages and then I've done you some covers then using the doodle delight kits pages so I've done this one and I've done the tick overlay and then I've printed that on the inside um so this is what you get on the front okay I've done that one here and I've done the script overlay um again that one there with the script overlay and then this one here with um and I put the and I am inverted the dots so instead of them being black they are white and i think that looks really cool and like i say i just backed mine then with um <clears throat> some of the uh doodle delight backing papers um and i've got this one printed out and i've got these ones still here left over from before so all of these are available on the freebies but um look at the difference in print quality just from me changing my paper it's quite um it's quite striking quite striking so i'm converted to that i think obviously it depends on what you're working on we don't want everything to be this vibrant and bright do we but in this particular instance i think i do so over to my left here no this is my right i have finally sat and sorted out now all of my little fussy cuts and i've printed out now all of these lovely little doodle art things out of my doodle kit oh what happened to that one there goodness gracious me let's put that over there for repair um and i printed them at half size and i've cut them all out using my my brother scan and cut. I've also now got ready to print out all of the art imagery and all of the, um, these are also in the, this is in the mixed media main kit, this ephemera here, but I just love it. And I've got all that ready now to go in my art journal. Um, I've sorted out all my little people. Don't forget these guys, these were all available as well. Uh, I'm sure they were freebies actually. And then my little hottie balloons. Um, and I've also got some pockets left over. So we're going to do something a little different this time. Um, this is one of the freebies. This was the first one I actually actually did. Um, and I'd gotten the side. I cut, printed this out too small. So I redid it. And that's why my pockets fit in there better now. But this is the first demo. So all I've done is flip it. And I put that on that side and that on that side. That is this one here. Okay. So that's the first set of pockets. That is how it can look. That's how it's designed to look. But like I say, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, so I've printed out all these extra covers. So what I thought we would start by doing is, mine are all slightly different sizes. And that's okay. That's mainly because I couldn't decide. And this one here is slightly larger. So I'm going to make two, two, two even, little journals. Or maybe we'll do three. And then I'm going to put these then inside of them because they're just slightly smaller. 
and then maybe that one in there and then we'll put that one on there let's put that one there yeah and then we'll put that one there and then that one underneath and then that one there right okay so that's fine so let's move that one out of the way a minute and then we'll work on this one first so i'm going to just simply fold them and then we're going to get to work using our pockets and we'll see what we've got left over because i've got some other ones here too so i just thought it'd be really good if we could kind of combine all of these together now and look at some different ways of using these pockets and making ourselves some little mini journals which is always fun and i'm not going to worry about these ones that are slightly blank because that's okay too on this one here well they're not slightly blank they are blank what am i on about slightly blank sorry my brain is elsewhere i have been um sewing all week because we are doing a craft um bella and i are doing a craft stand first time we've done one apart from at our retreats um and we are making stuff for it's a ladies conference at our church so my sister is part of the organization setup team she's asked us if we want to come and do a table there because they're doing like crafty stalls there um so Bella and I have been busy 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 bees making stuff for our craft stands so I have been busy this week and have thoroughly enjoyed myself making bible covers uh, or notebook covers as well I will show you them probably not in this video because I've left them downstairs but that's what I've been busy working on so um I've kind of yeah head full of toys with that and then I've just been sat there watching my Netflix was well, not Netflix it's actually on Disney my latest saga that I'm following uh you know me I love a if I'm once I'm in a series I'm in it and that's it I follow it until the end so I'm going to take some little scraps of paper here that I've salvaged from um Bella because I went down yesterday and helped her uh sort out her craft room I know she's sort of do me a solid and come and return the favour because mine's an absolute tip. I haven't been working up here all week. I've been down in my dining room actually, on the dining room table with all my fabrics out and my um uh what am I trying to say? My sewing machine is down there. That's what I was trying to say, sorry. <laughs> I went completely blank then. It's like do now my mother gave me a mini one of these a week or two ago do you think i can find it i go and visit her she gives me the loveliest of things she buys me tools and things and i come home and she knows i do this and i i just lose stuff i'm useless I just lose stuff so it'll turn up it's probably downstairs with my sewing stuff i've been doing embroidery oh i've done loads of things just not been on video i'm sorry about that guys i'm sorry i've been a bit awol but um there's just been lots going on and i've been tired and i just thought oh i'm not putting myself under pressure to to, to do videos when I know I'm not at my best for you. So I just thought, well, I'm going to just take the time and just, you know, um, enjoy um, doing some hand sewing. I'm looking for my uhu. It's downstairs. Have I got another one up here? Yes, I do. I'll try some of this, Elmer's. Okay. Right. So what I thought I would do. Oh, does this come off? Yeah. Oh, it's purple. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. I hope you dry clear. Um, Oh, gosh, it really is purple. Gosh, it goes nicely with my background, doesn't it? Okay, maybe you won't. So what I just thought we'd do is we would just add in some bits of, um, uh, you know, a bit of texture, mix it up a little bit, make things a little bit more, you know, just not quite so, just like, with the bright colours. Uh, and we'll just kind of break it up a little bit. I think I'll put that there. Um because obviously this is all, is all meant to be about mixed media. I'm really, really hoping that my phone is not picking up the music being played in my son's bedroom next door. Not that there's anything wrong with it at all. He's doing marvellously learning a new guitar song. Um, but I'm fairly certain that if um, it were to get picked up on YouTube, they would block me for copyright infringement because <laughs> he's playing it really well. Um, so yeah, I just hope that you're not picking that up in the background. Because I haven't got the heart to go in and say to him, turn it down, lad. Because <laughs> it's nice to hear him playing. Yes. So, yeah, been a busy week. Um, I've been a little preoccupied this week because I've been organising um, a break away next weekend. Uh, Dan and I are going to um, Staining, I think it's called. Um, oh, that's a good name, isn't it, for somebody who's working on mixed media? Ha <laughs> ha! 
Uh, yes, anyway, steaming. And it is in... Never eat a shredded wheat. It's in... I think East Sussex or maybe it's West Sussex. Anyway, it's down by Brighton on the near the coast. Uh, and we're going down there to the big church festival. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I've never been to a music festival. Um, I've always wanted to go to like Glastonbury or something. Got to be honest, a little scared to go to Glastonbury because it's a bit bonkers, isn't it? And it's probably not really my jam. Um, but um, this is all of the major um, like... Uh, you know, uh, Christian-based bands from all around the world uh, come in um, and they're doing a, a, a two-day festival there. So we're going up on Friday. Um, I'm not camping in a tent because I couldn't bear the thought of sleeping on the floor. I know my back would have been in half and I just wouldn't have slept. So I just thought, right, let's just, you know, not even bother to consider that because it won't work. I know it won't. So I had a look about and I didn't realise it was a thing, but apparently, well, I know you can because I've done it. Uh, you, I didn't know you. You can hire people hire out their caravans, um, and not only do they hire them out, but they deliver them for you. So um, I have hired a little tour of caravan because it's just Dan and myself, um, and somebody's delivering it. The people that own it are delivering it to the site for us on Friday. Um, so we'll be staying in a in a nice cute little tour of caravan. It's quite big one actually. It's got a shower in it. So, um, and my eldest. John, he's up there uh, also this weekend, next weekend, because he's working. He's got the volunteering with all of the volunteers um, to run the event with some of his pals from uh, his college. So that'll be fun. It'd be nice to see them all. And his girlfriend will be there too. So it'll be nice to catch up with her because she lives um, she lives up north. Um, so we haven't seen her since they've broken up from uni. Um, so, yeah, it'd be lovely to catch up with her because she's such a sweetie. Um, and then, yeah, just a couple of busy days at this. So we're going up on the Friday and then we're coming back on the m Monday morning, I think. I'm just hoping now, praying to goodness that there's no traffic coming back because that's going to be a bit of a, a drag otherwise because it is bank holiday Monday. And it's also the start of half term. So I just figured it'd be nice. Well, I've been thinking about it for a couple of months. I'm a bit of a, I'm a definitely a fair weather person. I would not have gone if it was going to be raining. Um, and I waited and waited to see the forecast and um, it is actually gorgeous here today um, but they have forecast it to be really nice now um, next weekend so I am super excited now um, it, but I've also kind of disappeared for a couple of days and wasn't able to do anything because um, I have this decision paralysis thing I don't know if that's the name for it um, but I literally just get to a point where I just can't make a decision about stuff Right, I'm going to make a decision here because I've just had a look at this and I'm thinking I would really like to put this lovely bright pocket on the front of here because I think that'll look amazing. So this is going to be my first port of call. Now I've just covered the inside with those little bits of... You don't have to go mad look when you're doing your collage. In. Oh, I've missed a page. Oh, my bad. You know, it's just a little bit here and there. Oh, look at that yummy tape there. That is really old sellotape. So I'm going to stick that down there because I think that'll just ooh, really add something. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, making decisions. Oh, hopeless at it. Can't make a decision. So, of course, once I discovered that this was like a thing, that you could hire a caravan, and I was like, oh, I fancy doing that. Um, then I was like, oh, now I've got to choose one. So I found a website, and then there was too many left, and I couldn't make a decision. So I spent three days procrastinating on that. Then by the time I finally started messaging people, most of them had already been booked out. Um, and then I finally got hold of one lady, and then she gave me a quote for delivery, and then I was like two days waiting on that, thinking, ah... Because I'm a bit mean, uh, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a cheap option. I, I'll be honest, but um, yeah, it, you know, it certainly was worth it. I felt so. I thought, well, what the heck? If I was buying all of the gear to go, it would have cost me just as much, um, you know. And the chances of me camping are very, very slim. Well, none. So I didn't see the point in wasting money and all of that. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. But yeah, this this whole thing about trying to make decisions. I mean, is it just me? Are, are you like that? Do you have issues making decisions over things? I wanted to buy a new sofa last Christmas. Um, the seti we've had, we've had. My goodness. Do you know what? I've just realised we moved here with that sofa. My three-piece suite is 11 years old. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Um, you know, and it was, it was only a cheap one at the time that I picked up. In fact, it was the cheapest one in the shop um, because we moved and there was just loads going on. And then we bought the house and moved again and all within the space of six months. It was just crazy, crazy time. Um, and yeah, it, it was just like 
wow but my sofa is in a terrible state um you know it's not dirty or anything like that it's just the bottom of the seat's gone so i've already got like these you get them from ikea can't you the things that rack out and then they like meant to support the seat but even they're not doing the job now um so anyway last christmas i was like okay we're gonna finally do we'll get a new sofa um you know we don't need a lot we only got a little room so a sofa and a chair would have sufficed do you think i could make a decision and choose a settee like heck could i i looked for about a month and the one that i really really liked i couldn't have because the living room wasn't big enough for it um and then i just like fixate on stuff then and because i couldn't find one like that one that i liked i just didn't end up bothering getting the sofa so here we are now um i don't know what is it may june may and we've just haven't changed the settee Oh, I don't know about that. Perhaps if I put the blue on and then put the pink over, it might look a bit purple. What do you reckon? Um, so, yeah, I, I am very bad at making decisions and, you know, choosing stuff. So that kind of, um, that took my whole week. And then finally on Thursday evening, I did it. I made a decision, I booked one, and then we were all sorted and ready to go. But, and it's like, oh, such a huge relief. And then my, my, my mind block stops and everything then as well. Uh, also, of course, this week we had Dan's big assessment. So if you were watching my last video or maybe the one before that, you'll have remembered that I had a phone call in the middle of it. We've been waiting for an appointment for Dan to have an ASD assessment um, for about a year now. Um, and, uh, and it took about a year before that to get him properly referred because they kept sending the referrals back. Anyway, went for the appointment. We were both very nervous. Didn't sleep much the night before. Um, and it was went really well. They were lovely. And I was like praying on the way over, like, just please let them, you know, because I don't feel it's just ASD. I feel it's more ADHD that with him like it is with the rest of us. Um, and I just didn't want them just slapping a diagnosis on him that wasn't appropriate and that he wasn't going to get the support for. School had been useless the last two weeks. Um, so I'm starting to get a bit like aerated over that with him. I don't get aerated with them. I get irritated in my head I'm too polite for that but um yeah they've not been great Senko reduced me to tears this week so I was a bit like this is ridiculous um but they the appointment went very well it was just about an hour long they just asked lots of questions which I gotta be honest were very similar to the ones that they asked my uh our Robert when he had his ASD assessment um and she concluded herself that he needed to have an assessment for ADHD as well so I was like few so they haven't made an official diagnosis as yet because obviously they want to have all the the information um and then what did they say then um oh yeah i asked how long it might take for the next step because obviously we've got holiday coming up we've got our retreat coming up you know and i want to be able to fully focus on that for him well and if we turn it that way that would be cool i'm going to cut that tab off i'm trying to do this slightly differently now as to what their actual intended use was so i'm taking that tab off there i'm going to just ink that around um so she said that actually there's not much of a wait for the adhd assessment which i did raise an eyebrow at because the adults you can't get in to see anybody so but apparently they're doing this new test now which i had read up on i think it's called qb qb or qp qb i think um test and she said she doesn't like the word test because it's not a test, but it's an assessment. Isn't it? And it's a bit like, I don't know if you've been to the opticians and you do that kind of um, the perception thing where you've got to sit with your face in like this, this round thing and press the dot every time you see, press the thing every time you see the white dot flash. I hate doing that. Well, he's got to do something like that, but for 20 minutes. Well, as soon as she said that, I was just like horrified and I thought, oh my goodness, there's no way I would sit doing that for 20 minutes. And then it, she, she could see my face. Obviously, I'd explain to her I'd been diagnosed ADHD last year and she said yeah that's the whole point we know that's a long time um but it's not actually taking much notice of what he's doing what it'll take notice of is how much he fidgets uh, how much movement there is um and how much he's able to pay attention to he's got to look for this a specific shape coming up or something and I was like ah right now I understand um so um yeah so she said that it was only gonna be a couple of weeks so I told her obviously I said well please don't book it for the second week of June because that's the week of the retreat and also he's got his GCSEs that week and then please don't book it for the last two weeks of July because we are skipping out and going on holly bobs so she was like oh and I said I, I, don't, I said don't tell the school but we are going we're missing the last week of term oh sure don't blame you I said so yeah he won't be here for that so can, if we could just avoid calling him up on those times because I know what it's like otherwise I'll 
blink and they'll be like, oh yeah, you've got an appointment. I'll be like, oh, we can't do it. So yeah, um, but she was lovely. So that yeah, they've written that on the thing and hopefully now we will hear something in the next couple of weeks with an appointment for him. And then hopefully by the end of the summer holiday break, he will have an answer one way or the other. So my uh, my fight now this week for him uh, you just seem to feel like you spend half your life advocating for your kids, don't you? Um, you know, I, I'm sick to death of hearing about how we're such an inclusive society. We really aren't. Um, and schools most definitely aren't. And they may be inclusive with some things, but when it comes to disabilities, they most definitely are not. So all this kind of, um, you know, you know, we'll be inclusive, we'll be this, we'll be that, is rubbish. Because when you actually need them to do something and to, <clears throat> you know, um, cut you some slack... Uh, they don't want to do it. So, yeah, at the moment we've got this whole... Because I spoke to the lady there, thankfully. Dan has this issue with... Uh, he can't wear his school uniform trousers. They're very uncomfortable for him. It's a sensory thing. Um, so he's been wearing black jeans to school for the last couple of weeks, which, of course, are a no-no in any school uniform. But it's the only thing that he wears and he's comfortable in. Um, otherwise, he feels like he wants to crawl out of his own skin. So I've gone with it. I've been a little anxious in case we got told off. And then I thought to myself when I was talking to the lady the other day, I said, I can't keep on worrying that someone's going to haul him onto one side and have a go at him. We need to deal with this. And she said, well, yeah. So I said, another lady that I'd spoken to from um, Scope told me that that is a reasonable adjustment. So uh, I don't know what it's like where you are in the world, but here we have something called Disability um, Act. Um, according to the Disability Act, um, people with disabilities are entitled to reasonable adjustments um, with regard to, you know, their working or school environment. Um, so she said, absolutely, that's a reasonable adjustment. So she told me to go back and email the school and to formally ask them to consider it as a reasonable adjustment and give them the reasons why. So I did that on Thursday, no, on Friday morning. I was a little nervous. Um, because they've got a new head teacher and he's like really on it at the moment. Every day we have text messages reminding them about uniforms. Um, but so I had an email back in the afternoon and I was like, ooh, is this a no? But it wasn't a no. It was this from Senko and she said, I've shown it to the head teacher, your email. Uh, he would like to see a picture of, oh, he, he wants to see what it is that he's wearing. But she said, I don't want to go and haul him out of class and traumatising him. So she said, um, are you able to send a photograph of, of the trousers he's got? I was like, yes, I can do that. So I went online quickly, found something very similar to what he wears, and I sent some photographs to them and thanked them. Um, so I'm just waiting to hear back now, and I'm just hopeful. I mean, crying out loud, what have we got? A week till half to him, and then five weeks until we break up? So, because the lady at the uh, assessment said to me, you tell them, is that, or he doesn't come into school? Because she said, that's what it's going to be a case of, because he's not going to want to come in. So I thought, well, I'll reserve that comment until I need it and I'll just go forward with a polite request to start with um because I don't do it rude unless it's absolutely necessary but they are pushing my buttons at the moment they um we had some like the, the music teacher's gone off on maternity leave he loves music music is like was his favorite option that he'd taken he's doing GCSE music um self-taught to play the guitar so we've had some issues there with that and I've been asking for three weeks for the music teacher to give me a quick call because I wanted to discuss something with her about his guitar lessons because he has them going. And I was wanted to work with her to get him back into these lessons. What do you think? She'd ring me? Pfft, the Scarlet Pimpernel this cover teacher is. Um, and instead of ringing me, she had a go at him then in front of the class two weeks ago about him not going. So I was really cross about that because I thought, well, hang on, my dear, we talked about this appearance evening and I already told you there was an issue and I asked her to get back to me because he didn't know what time his lessons were and where it was. He keeps getting lost and she hadn't bothered to get back to me. Instead, she'd given him a dressing down in front of the class. So I wasn't happy about that at all. Um, so I just wanted her to call me. So in the end, I ended up emailing the Senko and telling her and asking her to ask this teacher to call me. Uh, which she allegedly did, still no phone call. And then something else happened then that week and he came home really upset. And in the end, I sent an email. I'm not one of these parents constantly emailing schools. Please don't get me wrong. Um, but this situation is just getting a little bit ridiculous. So I emailed again and I asked um, for the... Oh, that's a bit big to go there. Let's put that on the other big one, shall we? I asked... Um, I sent it to the associate head 
and his head a year, I copied them in, I sent it to the Senko and I told them that there'd been an issue and that um, I was still waiting for a phone call back to discuss um, what had been happening. Well, that's better to put there. Um, and then <laughs> the following day, the Senko rang me, which she should have done previously, because I asked for a meeting, I did. I asked for a meeting with his form teacher, music teacher and the Senko, just so that basically we could all catch it up at the same time. I'm not repeating myself. And then I know that they are actually updated. Um, and then the Senko rang me and she basically said, oh, look, we, we, you know, we need to get these things sorted for him as soon as possible. They don't have time for meetings at the moment. And then she kind of let slip then that the music teacher didn't want to call me because she was afraid. She made it sound like she was afraid that I was going to shout at her. And I thought, I've never given any indication that I would shout at anybody. I've never shouted at a teacher in my life. I used to work in schools for years as a business manager. And I know that's just not appropriate, not done or called for. I know the jobs are hard, but... I thought, if you were afraid I'm going to shout at you, you must think that there's a reason why I need to shout at you. Otherwise, she would have a clear thing and be thinking, I just want to get hold of her to speak to her to sort this out for him, you know. Um, and th th literally, the Senko spent probably... I had to interrupt her in the end because she would not stop talking. Um, ten minutes telling me what a hard time this music teacher was having, taking over for the teacher was off on maternity leave and... You know, all the mess that she had to pick up. And I thought, well, that's your fault because you had terrible supply teachers and in the interim. Um, and, you know, how she was, you know, it was not just myself, but there had been other issues as well. And, you know, and I thought, are you expecting me to feel sorry for this person here? I didn't quite understand what the comment And in the end, she reduced me to tears and I just thought, this is ridiculous. I rang you, I've contacted you all over a really serious safeguarding issue with my son. And you're expecting me now to feel sorry for her um when her behavior made him feel so badly about himself you know w the, i've now got to risk assess that situation and i just thought something's not right you you know at what point does does the child become the priority in all of this so i didn't i don't know i felt a bit annoyed myself to be honest because i felt like i should have been um in the end i just was like look can you please ask her to call me i'm not going to shout at anybody i'm not cross with anybody when i just need to speak to someone to get this resolved so that my kid can get on with his guitar lessons rather than going into school feeling bad and thinking that the music teacher hates him um but yeah i was on the phone for like nearly 40 minutes um and i said it just really annoyed me and i thought you're just trying to cover your back here because there's been an incident happening in school you know you should have been looking out for him and you weren't and because and it's your fault basically and yeah, I was just disgusted. I really was. I, I Thankfully, I was at my mum and dad's at the time. So um, I got off the phone and my poor parents, then I have, they have, have it all. And I feel like, what happened? Um, but yeah, I was just like, oh, this is ridiculous. So this is why I haven't been on to do a video, guys. I'm sorry. Lots going on as always. Right. Let's have a look, see. Oh, see, now these are going to be pretty in there, aren't they? Yes. Okay, so I'm literally just thinking now we're just going to get all of these little pockets popped in here. Love it. Um, then I'm thinking, let's put a nice big number behind there and let's ink it in pink. Ink it and pink it. Yes. I'm so excited for our retreat. I am so excited to go camping next weekend. Well, posh camping in a caravan still camping though guys still camping and i am so excited to go on holiday with my family this summer i just can't wait <laughs> i can't wait oh that looks nice behind me doesn't it <clears throat> oh and we had our dog paulie as well this week just to add that into the mix well actually that was over the weekend and on to monday a tiny little staffy we thought he was, well, I didn't think he was dying. Sure, thought he was dying. He's a little dramatic. But, um, yeah, he, well, he was actually very poorly. But I, I don't know. I'm not cold. I'm just good in a crisis, I think. I, I managed to stay very calm and keep a cool head. Um, I don't think about the worst. I just think about what we need to fix and how to fix it. So I don't get phased by things like that. Um, it may seem unemotional. It's not. I just know that being emotional isn't helpful in the situation. Does that make sense? So I try to kind of keep a lid on that. Oh, there, that's pretty. I do like that. So you see how you can be using your fussy cuts now to decorate your backgrounds. Now, let's do something um, 
cool on the inside. So we've got these pockets here and these ones here. We could fill that with pockets, really, couldn't we? Let's have one of these at least done in the double. So I'm going to use one of the fainter ones in the background. <clears throat> Are these going to fit on here? Because these, yeah, I think so. Because these covers were a bit uh, smaller than the others. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, he was super poorly. Um, we didn't know what was wrong with him. I wasn't sure if he had kidney stones or what. But uh, Sunday, he didn't eat at all. He'd had like an upset tummy for two days. So we had him on chicken and rice. But then on Sunday, he wouldn't eat at all and wouldn't have his little like medicine stuff that we were giving him for his upset tummy. Like this paste stuff that they have. Um, and he wasn't drinking much. It was very warm here last Sunday because I actually burnt all my arm cutting the lawn. It was only out there an hour. <coughs> and then... Um, so, yeah, we spent all Sunday evening and afternoon outside trying to help him and sort him out and then i of course then got up then thinking monday morning that i was going to end up having to go to the vet i've done that now and i've put that on there no i'm going to do it anyway i know i shouldn't have stuck that on there i should have thought this through first i'm just going to trim a bit off the edge um so i got up monday morning rang the vet and they couldn't see him until um i think it was like quarter past three that day so i was like oh right okay so I knew I was going to be nursing him all day, keeping an eye on him. As it was then, I went out and checked on him. And he um, was up and about. I was like, oh, because he wasn't. He was super feeling sorry for himself on the Sunday. Um, and he, he is like that, our staff. He's always been the same. Whenever he's been poorly, he proper feels badly for himself. So you're never really sure if he's really, really ill or if he's just feeling sorry for himself. Because he is a bit of a big baby. Um so oh, i love him to bits so he's so cute taffy the staffy his name is um so he was like loads better so throughout the day and he was eating i fed him three times throughout the day little portions of chicken <clears throat> sorry i have a drink in it guys sorry sorry about that the hay fever is in full bloom and it's making me dry um yeah so i was feeding him through the day and then i texted sure i was like he's loads better so um, I gave him his medication then that we had here um, and he had that and he was fine. So I rang the vet and I said, look, he's, he's up and about, he's better. Um, I don't actually think we need the appointment. And she said, well, just keep an eye on him. If there's any problems, give us a call. So, um, and he's been fine since. So we kept him in most of the week, but he's been out now walking the last two days. He's back out playing with his pals, but he is out now running around the garden. This morning, um, I can hear him in and out the house, trip, trap, trip, trap he does live in our kennel block with the big dogs that are out there the working dogs um we initially got him which is a bit of a laugh and a bit of a joke and if anybody who's watching has a Staffordshire Bull Terrier you'll know how ridiculous this comment is going to be we initially got him because when we were walking our dogs years ago other people walk with their dogs and they would attack our dogs so my lovely Labrador Holly she's been in several scraps up on our mountainside with other dogs with They've tried to attack the pack and she's like, I don't think so. Um, but she'd get pitched into then. So he bought Taff in the hope that it would he'd defend the pack and would, you know, scare off anybody else. Well, as I said, if anybody's ever met a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, you'd know how ridiculous a statement that is. Because he's the biggest softie of the lot. Oh, I love him to bits. He looks terrifying, but he's really not. He's just a big softie. Um... So, yeah, uh, it's just not nice then seeing them poorly bad, is it? There we go. So we've got that pocket in there now. And I, I feel I want to just put a bit of blue ink on the inside of that page there. Just to finish that off. I do like this double layered pocket. Now, obviously, you can use these pockets in your larger size journals because that'll go across uh, an A5 page then. You see, uh, do I have an A5 page to hand? What have I got here? Oh, here we are. It's a standard page. So if we were to fold that in half, see how that pocket would fit quite nicely, look, on a normal journal page. So you can use the, these pockets in your journals and that. That's a standard pocket size. It's, they just happen to also fit quite neatly into these. Right. What about this side now? Let's put something here. And um, what if we do a little side tuck? And that'll make the most then of that as well. What is on my elbow? I don't know. Um... I forgot where I was now, guys, with my story, sorry. So, yeah, anyway, he's better. He's out there now, trip, trap, trapping about. He's, uh, like I say, he normally is in the kennel, but I've just let him run back and forth today. Uh, he's just funny. He really is funny. 
but he's just so dramatic. So, I mean, it, it was awful. I, I, I genuinely did think that there was something quite seriously wrong when I saw him Sunday night before bed. But no, he's just bounced back. So very grateful, very grateful, because I was not relishing the thought of having to tell the kids if anything awful had happened. I'd already, I had to tell my mother on Monday, I said, I'd already decided in my mind I was going to have to tell a fib. And I was going to have to tell them that he'd gone to stay with a friend of ours who keeps a kennel and that he'd been retired because I could not have told them that he'd passed away if he had, uh, especially not this month because Robert started his um, exams this week in uni and uh, Dan's had mocks. Oh my gosh, Dan's mocks, I've got to tell you. He had his math mock results back this week. Um, he had 93% in his one math exam, came top of the class. Came top of the class in both the math exams, but he had 93%. I am so, so proud of him. He's done marvellously. Clearly the apple hasn't fallen very far from that tree. And I am going to take credit for that because I am a bit of a math genius myself. Now, I've also got all of these still left over. These are spares. They were the waterfall things. So I'm thinking I might use these now as some little individual flips on these pages. And they will then create some little like um, hidden journaling spaces. Don't you think? Yeah. I'd be having fun with these main minis, guys. But I know I have been and it's nice to just have all these pockets done ready and to just be able to mindlessly oh and I've backed them with this cool page I love out of the mixed media medley um yeah it has been a lot of fun I've been a bit all over the place because my events have been running like mid-month to mid-month um but I have done um a kit now for me which will be out this week um and those of you that are members of my Kofi, you will have that um, later in the week. I'm, I'm about halfway through it. I started last night. Um, here we are. So that's just going to be a little flip there, look. And then I think, should we do like a flip out for this one? See, so you can use these, look, as little flip outs and tip ins and stuff like that. This is where all of the interest starts getting added now, isn't it? Oops. Okay. Let's speed this up a bit. Now, I know that that didn't print properly, but I don't care. This is a mixed media, arty style journal. It's fine. It will be okay. Actually, I tell you what I could do. I could fold this in. Make that a tuck spot. And then hopefully it'll look fine. I've got to keep an eye on the time because I've got to go down and help mum finish her craft room. Um, let's just ink that there. Okay, so I'm going to, what on earth, there we are, right, just glue that down to the edge of the page, okay, yeah, we started tidying her craft room yesterday, um, so we're going to do her fabric cupboards, cupboards now today, and get that finished, I really haven't folded that straight at all, have I? Oh, it's fine. I'm not going to worry too much. This is just a prototype. I just need to stick something on the front. Let's put this on here. We'll have a paintbrush on there, shall we? Not a paintbrush. What's this called? A tube of paint. There we go. We'll stick that on there. Like this. And I think I'm going to put... Bear with, bear with. Um, what do I do with it? Ah, here it is. I have a little bit of cheesecloth under there. Oh, guys, you wait till you see my covers. I am so pleased with myself. I've worked really hard, really hard. Um, and I didn't even have a rotary cutter at the time. I only managed to grab one of those off mum yesterday. Um, but yeah, I'm so pleased with how they've turned out. Um, I, I was looking through mum's stuff the other day when I was down there because I was like, I have no idea what to make for this craft store. Bear in mind, it's only in two weeks' time and I hadn't started. But, you know, that should come as no surprise to you guys. You know me. Last May Annie. Um, and our mum had a lovely art journal she'd made there previously. And she'd done this like patchwork cover. And I was like, oh, I could make a load of those. So that's what I've done. So you can either put a signature in there or have notes in there. Or they can put it around their Bibles. So I've just cut out some more now today to do different sized ones. There we are. And then you'll have a little tuck spot there. So let's just glue that down so it is actually a, a little tiny tuck. And then what can I put in there to show that that's a tuck spot? Perhaps we'll put, because I have a ephemera here. Of course I do. Let's have this. And let's ink around in blue so that it stands out a bit. I need to check on the time now, guys. See how long I've been waffling. There we are. Let's go a little tuck there. 
and then our final page Ooh. oh we've already got a big pocket there so that's fine and then we need to put something on here now so i can either do a tip up or um, what should we do should i do a flap down no because i like that there think rachel think oh because i've got these pockets too let's put one of these on there shall i yeah let's use one of these okay so i'm gonna just fold that in like so and then fold that in there like so and then fold that in. now at first i was a bit confused why they had these funny bits on the end but it, the purpose of it is, is so that the one end is rounded off you see so you've got a you know a round edge that makes sense let's just get some ink on there because this is a blue page i'm on series nine of gray's anatomy yep already i know um i'm not impressed because some of the main characters have started departing so that's been a bit like oh i had to wind it on today it was a bit sad and I thought, I'm not, I'm not getting sad over a TV series. This is just, I know I'm really invested in these characters now, but I just can't afford to be getting sad over a TV programme. So I just wound it on. I knew it was going to happen. And I just thought, yeah, I don't, I don't need to see this. Um, so, yeah, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm a little panicky, I'm already halfway through. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I should have put that up there, shouldn't I? My bad, never mind. Live and learn. Live and learn. Right, there we are. And I'm going to put a nice, vibrant bright tag in there let's just ink it sorted okay and then of course now i've got all of my little bits and pieces here now um all nice and cut out ready for me to use so i've got a number i'm going to put on there and i think i'm actually quite tempted to put her on there what do you reckon i have a sitting up like that on the pocket should we let's put a bit of vintage photo around her so she hasn't got white edges and looks like i've just cut her out because that kind of defeats the object she's so cute she actually reminds me of the little girl in uh, in gray's anatomy zola <laughs> i was watching the episode the other day where he hadn't done her hair that was funny miranda had to teach him how to do her hair and i thought yeah too right because you know what he's like he's wandering around with all his hair tidy and he dr shepherd with buffon patrick dempsey oh my goodness okay so yeah let's stick her on there and then i'm going to put should i put that number there down down there like that yeah let's do it let's just do it let's just do it stick her on okay hands are shaky dee there we are or should i put the number there no i want i want to put it like here no, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put the number there and then I'm going to put a little word on there, I think. I know, I'm d dithering now over incidentals. Um, should we put Joy on there? She looks joyous, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. Ink, 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 ink. And then I'm going to put Joy. Does it matter if I put over her shoes? Oh, that'll be all right, won't it? Or should I put it up there? No, I don't like it there. I like it down there. I don't think it matters. She looks like she's sitting behind the word Joy. I'm not covering her shoes. Let's not think of it like that. There we go. Joy. There we are. She's so cute. Okay. So, that's our first one done. <sighs> Pocket on the side. Little tip out. Are we done here? A little flip up. Pocket, pocket. Side pocket. Pocket side pocket and then we turn this one the other way around so already as you can see there are oh yes not forgetting the one on the front um should we put something in here something interesting what have we got here um oh i know what we'll do okay we will let me just straighten that edge there so put that in there ink around the edge and then we will put i hope i've got one big enough let's put a hot air balloon on the front yes why not let's see how much of it 
it'll stick out. So if I have it sticking out there, I want to be able to see that there, basically. So we'll stick that at the top. Oh, but I want to put some cheesecloth behind it first. Bear with. Loving my cheesecloth. Best Amazon buy this month. I'm usually just like scrubbing little bits off our man. But I was like, no, I need to get some. I, to be honest, it just hadn't occurred to me like where to get it from. I don't know why I just don't think about these things. Or rather, when I think about it, it just seems very complicated in my head. And I was like, no, well, everybody seems to have it. So it must be something that's easy to get hold of. I'll check on Amazon. And what do you know? Lo and behold, there it was on Amazon. So I got some of that. And I also got some canvas, which I've been using this month for my embroidery, which I'm very much enjoying. It's very mindful. Um, quite a lot of the ladies from the retreat are into their hand stitching now so it'd be nice to have a look what everyone's been doing I think I'm going to take my sewing to the retreat actually this time because um, I never journal there I, well I lie, I made a journal last time didn't I but that was with all the stuff that everyone had brought but I don't um, I don't normally brave I'm going to put brave on the front here, I think. Oh, have I got in blue? Oh no, let's have laugh. Yes, let's have laugh. Why not, say? Why not? There we go. Now, I'm not going to have time to do the other two on camera today, so I may show you them at a later point. I don't want to drag this video any longer, but I hope I've given you lots of ideas now today on how... You can be putting these little journals together, your May Minis. But they have lots of options and possibilities. I'm going to put the brave one on the bottom here because I tell you what, you want to get up in a hot light balloon, you've got to be a brave person. I'd like to have a go. I wanted to, um, you know, jump out of a plane with a, a parachute. I can't remember what that's called now. Um, but and gliding is it is that the right term no that's not right that is gliding what's it called when you jump out of a plane jumping out of a plane i guess it, it is called something i know it is i can't think but for years i wanted to have a go at that i was going to do it with somebody when i was working in the school and then i moved jobs and it just never happened um now i'm not so sure <laughs> i need to keep my bones not from getting broken now so probably not a great idea but there we are there we go. I think that looks rather spiffing. I think I should have put that number up there. Can I get it off still? Yes. Can I take it off the wood? Yes. Let's put the number up there. It'll just be a bit more interesting on the top, I think. So let's push that in. Where should I put the number? Here. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. There we go. So that is our little notebook, which I'm really pleased about. You definitely need something on the back. Did we use this pocket? Yeah, I must have done because I've only got two left. What if I use... Um, oh, let's have one of these. Should I put that one on the back? Yeah. I feel like there needs to be something on the back there. I hope that I haven't been on your ages now. I just can't tell. I start waffling and then I'm enjoying making and then it's just time's gone. Obviously, if you're doing these as single, you know, just the covers, um, you know, for like like the ones I did last time, you know, you could have gotten quite a few done in this time because I've basically made four, haven't I? It's just I've stuck them all in together so that they will be a notebook. But, um, and I'm talking. Whereas if I wasn't talking, I'd probably be working a lot for a lot quicker because I wouldn't be having to think twice. Here we go. And then in the back of here, then we can put maybe this. Oh, this is the pinks one, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. A bit croaky. And then I can stitch around all of these at some point, then, if I should wish to. There we are, got that in there. And then I think we'll put this little cutie, vibrant hot air balloon on the front because I just love them. I love hot air balloons. Where we live in the summer, you see them all floating up this way because there's like an event that goes off in Bristol and they all float up here, they do. And I remember the one year, gosh, the boys were only little, um, one crashing into the mountain. No, you know, they were, nobody was hurt. It didn't crash. I mean, they only moved like 
clean by then. I was on there. Um, but it landed opposite our house on the mountain opposite. And it uh, took down the farm that is over there. It's uh, power out. Um, but everybody was out in the street watching. It was crazy. Never forget that. I'm not sure, actually, they didn't get hit by lightning or something. I think there'd been a bit of a storm. As I say, everyone was fine. You know, I'm not talking about it like it was a, a huge, terrible event. And I'm sat saying, oh, yeah, that was so much fun. <laughs> Um, but no, everybody was okay. That wood's too big to go on there. Anything narrower? Hope. That's quite nice. Let's have that. Yes, we all do with a bit of hope, couldn't we? <clears throat> okay. Oh, I've cut that too short now. Well, it might be okay. It looks a bit, um, you know, wrecked, doesn't it? Well, it? That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. Right. Okay. Put that down here. If we lift that up in a minute, I'm going to just poke that underneath there. Oh, come on, down you go. There, hope. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that looks really cute. Really cute. Here we are. So we've got our pocket there. Let's put some bits and pieces in here, shall we? There we are. And then we've got another pocket here. So what can I put in there? <clears throat> Let's put our painting easel in there, shall we? Because you can write on that, you see. You can put a little note on there to yourself or whatever. Journal on it. And then we've got our little tag in there. And then I need something tiny to go in here. Is that something tiny enough? Why is all my stuff stuck to itself? Yes, there we go. I know I haven't inked all these yet, but it's just, just for demo. Um, and then in here, then we can put something larger. That might be better in there because it's a bit more attractive on the eye. And then we can put another little journal card behind there. And then under there, then you've got a little journaling spot. And then here, we've got a little tip out and you can pop a little tuck thing in there and right behind there. And then here, then we've got our lovely, joyous little girl in the back. And then we can put something in here. So there we go, guys. All that needs now is a little bit of thread and she's all done. So I hope you've enjoyed our quick little tutorial today. Like I say, just another idea of how you can put together a little notebook. The freebies are there if you want to go and download them from our Kofi channel. Obviously, you can do these little books in whatever, you know, you're working with, whatever um, <clears throat> materials you've got out, you know, but you can do them in this style. Take the idea and run with it and use your own... Um, kits or whatever you're working on but they they're just really nice little that i mean that'd be really nice in the front pocket of a journal i think i, I love to have a little mini pull out like that not only that but for people that like to go off and do stuff and they want to write on the go and they don't want to take their journal that's really handy for that because you can populate your little receipts and stuff in there if you're out on a day trip um yeah but no i love it i'm really pleased with it i hope you are too have a wonderful wonderful rest of your weekend I hope to be back with you very soon. I hope to have less of a dramatic week this week. Um, but yeah, don't forget that all the kits are still on sale. And if you want to download the downloads, they're over on our Kofi page. But I will see you all very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.